So guys, we're here in Nanda Dam, a very, very popular bass destination in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. It's close to the Valley of a Thousand Hills. You'll see a lot of houses built around uh, from the local community around this dam. Quite a long dam, I think seven kilometers. Or... I'm not 100% sure. Well, I can't remember, but I'm here with John from Low Range, South Africa. I don't want to say John the Giant. You guys can kind of figure that out yourself. But. Um, so it's really nice coming out with him. He's got a boat, uh, well he's got some fish finders with a boat attached to it. That's probably the right, uh, right way to describe it. And then obviously new ghosts. So the objective today, Rob's coming through his wall later today, is to actually put all these electronics and stuff to the test and John's going to make us wise on all the new units, the HGS lives and the ghost and how it all works forward. But most importantly we're going to do some fishing. And uh, I know you're keen on the top water and frog fishing this morning. I am indeed. So I'm going to join you on that. No one wants to miss that. It's actually been great, probably for the last two months from November. Two, three months the top water is we've been pretty. fishing. We've been fishing here for the past, I would say, four months and the frog bite has been on. So. Continuously, and it normally lasts till May. So it's a fantastic summer and autumn uh, season normally for the, for the frog fishing here. So yeah, we're going to give it a good go and uh, fish some other top water lures as well. And you've also fitted the power poles this week. So uh, I have indeed, yeah. So this is a fully rigged bass boat now. I'll give you a rundown of what we have. Um, we've got an HDS Live 16 on the bow connected to the HDI skimmer, mo uh, skimmer transducer that's built into the nose cone. Then on the console we've got an HDS, 7, uh, an HDS uh, 12 Live that's connected to the 16. Um, running a TM150, structure scan 3D, and then we've got a Elite 12 Ti on the other side of the console that's running active imaging 3 and 1, and then we've also got a Hook 7 with a triple shot on the back, and then of course the power poles that we've been fitted this week. And as we go along, I'll show you guys exactly how this all works together, where you can control everything from um, to make it an all round fishing platform for, for the bass fishermen. Okay, well, your electronics here yeah, is probably bigger value than the boat at this stage you're looking at all of it i would so say the value the value of the boat the the, the <laughs> units on the boat is probably worth more than the boat itself yeah. Yeah. <laughs> correct and uh batteries to run this massive setup how many batteries do you need okay Two so, yeah so what i've done is i i, I don't like uh, connecting electronic batteries to the cranking battery so i've got a dedicated cranking battery at the back then i run two 105 deep cycles specific for the electronics and then I've got the 24 volt system in the front for the sneaker motor. So I run five batteries in total on the boat. But for a normal system, if you've got a 12 in front, a 9 and maybe a 7, yeah, you're going to need one proper deep one, cycle. One deep cycle battery. Yeah. Will be enough. And that can double up for the for the trolling motor? or No, the trolling motor will be a 24 volt system on its own. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Uh, well, they can do up to 36 and you'll need three, three batteries. batteries. Yeah. Correct. Uh, which makes the guys because they brush us you can vary 24 and 36 volt which takes it up to 112 or 120 pounds of thrust on 36 and 97 on 24 volt. So the way it's going you might not need an outboard one of these days. Correct. Actually had it running on 36 volt just because it's our demo boat but it's a bit too powerful so we had to take a battery out otherwise you get thrown around on the front. <laughs> there we go guys enough talking let's get fishing let's get on the water. Now myself and John arrived quite a bit earlier than Rob Fisher at Inanda Dam and had some time to kill. And how better to kill some time by going topwater fishing. Now what's really fantastic about some of these dams, especially after the last couple of seasons, 
there was very little rain which made the dam levels drop drastically that's one of the positive things of the mismanagement of South Africa is there's not enough water to supply everybody so the dams, dams drop drastically and if there's not enough rain that even happens more and then we had some good rain which lifts it up again every every season <coughs> which makes it a fantastic bass dam for some reason well we know the reason and uh, just with all that grass that gets to grow when the dam's low and the dam pushing up it, it allows a lot of organisms and, and fodder and stuff to, to actually live in that which is very very good for the growth rate of the bass and it makes the dams exceptionally healthy if they drop drastically and lift drastically now i know john's gonna throw a zoom frog because it's proven itself over years but new on the market it's kingfisher's reaction stretch okay firstly they float which makes it quite nice for frog fishing yeah. Then it's got a hull of an indestructible stretch, okay, which really makes this uh, long lasting bait. And then I like the fact that they've got paddle tails, so I really want to try that and see what, what difference it makes as opposed to the horny toads. Um, so, yeah, black. John told me black's working. And I brought him some horny toads because he said he needs some, which I still had in stock in my stock room. But I'm very keen to see what the reaction baits do. So let's get going with it. What I'm using, like I said, the reaction frogs. I'm using a 5 uh, mustard. I only use mustard for bass fishing. The mega bite for plastics. And this is the big bite very very strong hook using 50 pound jay braid on this so you can fish into structure and you can really pull them out of anything also it's very direct to set the hook i'm using it on an xls seven foot i'm still waiting getting my tattoo waiting for that the frog rod and then just on an old laguna now with frog fishing you can use the faster reels the 8.1 i think will work very effectively to quickly set that hook this is just, I think, a 6.3. It doesn't even say on the side. It's a very old reel. Now, guys, if you look carefully on the banks here, you'll see all the how low the dam still is. There's quite a bit of water to still come in to fill this dam up. But you'll see all the vegetation and stuff that started growing there. Bushes and brushes and just any bass angler's dream that you know so it's difficult to always keep a you know unless you've got a photogenic memory um, keep a exact image of what is where that's why with your with your fish finder you'll mark them and you'll name them saying here's a nice brush which you can come and look for uh, when the dam's full um, but yeah there's there's quite a few charts available as well which makes a big difference when you fish It's a matter of what, what's nice about this type of frog fishing is you can work a lot of water quite quickly and find the fish. So early morning, good way to start until you start getting some boils. They come up for the for the frog, and probably the most exciting type of uh, bass fishing, if you want to call it that. It's like popping for GTs. The same kind of sensation. Okay, now another lure that works. Say. John in France fishing a frog, I can quite easily work a chatterbait. And uh, if you work them more or less at the same speed, this thing hit. I just wanted to say it's not chattery. Look at the tip of the rod. What this chatterbait does now. This is a Pro-Rex chatterbait. <laughs> Very cost effective. And I'm one of the first to look at something and say, okay, if it's cheaper, it means that 
that must be not a great quality but these little buggers vibrate like you can't don't understand very good quality chatterbaits at such a reasonable price just over 100 rand and if you know the chatterbait craze currently i mean some of the chatterbaits are selling close to 500 rand um, so today or this while being here in Nanda is definitely one of the baits I want to test and I've put a Pro Rex paddle tail on there um, and I actually added a rattle on this one just to, to play around a bit that's what we do I also heard beforehand that the water is quite clear so you're going more natural with with uh, your colors more earthy colors if you can call it that and uh, that's what we're doing and this I've put on 50 pound braid j-braid as well on the xl 7 foot mrb it's a medium rod so it's a bit softer that works nicely for chatterbait fishing also awaiting the tatula as soon as that comes and that's just with one of the previous models of the xls 100a 6.3 which allows you you don't want a very you don't need a fast reel for this Small keeper. Baby. Now we spent about 30 minutes on the first corner or main lake point and John managed to get three fish. I got the short end of the stick and didn't get a bite, but still had the rest of the day with Rob Fisher to catch up. Before Rob phoned, we quickly shot into Durban Bay where the water was really, really clean and we didn't manage to get a bite in the 15 minutes we spent there. Rob Fisher arrived and it was shooting back to the launch ramp quickly for John to calibrate all the new toys on Rob's boat. John made fast work of this and we were ready to fish in no time. Make sure you catch the calibration video of the low range units together with a ghost trawling motor and a video to follow. Thank you all for watching ASFN Fishing and remember to subscribe and hit that little notification bell should you want to receive notifications of every video we upload.